Well, there is a circle of life, and throughout this circle, countless people touch our lives and nurture our faith. Today, we are remembering and celebrating the women who have done so. We will hear three different passages of scripture this morning, each one highlighting a different woman in the Bible who loved their child in unique ways. We will also hear stories from several of our men about the women in their lives who have nurtured their life of faith. May God touch your hearts as we hear these stories. Our scripture reading comes from the fir- from First Kings. I invite you to listen for the word of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Arise, go to Seraphath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And and she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil and a cruise. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward make yourself, make for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord of the God, the Lord, the God of Israel. The jar of meal shall not be spent, and the cruise of oil shall not fail, until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said. And as she and he and her household ate for many days, the jar of meal was not spent, neither did the cruise of oil fall, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for this special day, this wonderful day that you have set aside. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, Lord God, use me to bless your people. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Um, let me take a deep breath. Sometimes, uh, it's kind of difficult for me to talk within a limited time period. <laughs> so bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, because uh, if you ask yourself how many hours do we spend uh, watching, what is the name? The ball game, a lot. A game that could have finished in 30 minutes, we spend hours, so give me some time. So. <laughs> It's your day. If the men are not rushing, don't rush. Just give me some few moments. First thing to observe, I'm going to reflect on the scripture reading. The first thing to observe about the widow is that she has a gift of hospitality and a noble woman of generosity. That is one thing that I want us to focus on today. This woman planned ahead, contemplated, and because she had never left in her food pantry. So she knows that, hey, look, if I just could make this food and we eat it, that's our last, and we have no food to eat anymore. So how many of us have actually think about our last penny to spend? But, you know, she's a woman of faith. She relaxed, and God knew that this woman is facing an issue in her life. So he has to direct Elijah to go and meet her at the point of her need. So that means when you put God first, he will make you his utmost priority. As I said, women and moms are great planners. They contemplate, plan ahead. 
Because there are a lot of women that have economic hardships. They struggle with issues of life. Think about food to eat. So this woman has to meet the urgent question, the demand. And Elijah actually spoke authoritatively. Give me some food. Bring me some water. So what's to be your response? And what is in your hands? Today, as a mom, just reflect back. Look into your homes. What do you have? What is in your hand? But here is one thing. One word from God can change your destiny. God has spoken through Elijah, go and meet this woman at the point of her need. So, when God meets you at the point of your need, that is your, your turning point. The request was painful, but necessary. That is one thing I wanted to know. Give me all that you have. Serve me first, and then think about yourself. Painful, but necessary. But the key thing to learn here is that the woman actually has faith. If you let go of what is in your hand, God will bring you abundance. So she had a very little one in her hand, but she let that go to Elijah first. But the key thing here is fear not. That's a, that's, that's a comforting aspect of it. Elijah said, fear not. What is fear? Fear is defined as false evidence appearing real. So what happened in this woman? Hey, this is my last food. So if I finish it, that is it. We are dead. But fear and faith cannot live together. The fear is what characterizes the woman, the widow. But now faith is the one that she's going to embrace to bring her miracle out. So what is, what is faith? The Bible says, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I want us to look at it now, the word now. When God said now, just reverse now. You have won, W-O-N. Reverse it. Look at it now. Won. So God already knew that that woman has nothing. But he has already defeated that emptiness, that scanty food that she has, to replace it with abundance. So she already won that battle of hunger. That is something that I wanted to learn. So when I read in the Bible and God said, no, I reverse it to one. So God will take anything away. God will not take anything away from your hand without replacing it with something better, overflowing. So that is a reflection of the scripture that I want us to look at today, that sometimes when we face crisis, God is already there. He is watching the situation and planning ahead. So that material moment, this woman, uh, Elijah, just received the word of God and impart that word to the woman, the widow. So now let me talk a little bit about, please be time with me, uh, mothers. My mother is a woman like no other. She gave me life, nurtured me, taught me, dressed me up, fought for me, held me, shouted me, kissed me, and most importantly, importantly, loved me unconditionally. All the gift that life has to offer, a loving mother is the greatest of them all. Because a mother is she who can take the place of others but whose place no, uh, no one else can take. Being a mother is, a learning, is learning about strength you did not know you have, and dealing with fears you didn't know existed. There is no way to be a perfect mother, but a million ways to be a good one. To the world, you may be one person, but to us, you are the world. It is not easy being a mother. If it were easy, Fathers will do it. You 
get sold out right here. My baby started crying, you know, and I said, hey, look, it's not easy to be a, 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 a mother. So talking about that, we just had, I'm just having a nice and beautiful mother in my house. And then I had a baby. We, we, you know, all those moments were characterized with fear. How are we going to cope? But thank God we have a lot of encouragement from people, Pastor Nancy, Libby, a whole lot of you have supported us tremendously. So that actually cast away fears because there is love that exists in this church that maybe we probably couldn't have found out. So let us continue to honor, respect, and love mothers as the trees love water and sunshine. They help us grow, prosper, reach great uh, heights. Let everyone know that today you are a lot stronger than you were yesterday. Smile. Mothers hold their children's hand for a short while, but their hearts forever. My mother taught me about the power of inspiration and courage, and she did with strength and passion that I wish could be bottled. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. And I just want to also acknowledge the tremendous work being done by our ladies in the nursery. They sacrifice the word of God to take care of our babies whenever we send them there. So happy Mother's Day to you all. Sorry if I have gone over the five minutes. <laughs> God bless you. Our apostles' reading comes from 2 Timothy 1, 5, 3, 14, 17. Listen for God's word to you. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Louise, and your mother, Eintz, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. <clears throat> but as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from who you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What I wanted to share today is women of faith that have made sacrifices. And I tend, I'm looking at these women as women of experience because we don't want to say older women because age has no limit to how you can help people. Uh, and the thing is in scripture is, you know, when it says look at your mothers and your grandmothers. And when I read that, I thought back to my own self, and we've all known women that have, women that have made sacrifices to become, to help us to become the people that we should be. These are the people that guide us to uh, help us become the men and women that we are meant to be, and without the strong leadership of the, these women in our lives, we could never make it. The Bible is full of women like Sarah, who gave birth to Isaac when she was 90, Ruth, who supported Naomi and went wherever Naomi wanted her to go, and then, of course, Mary, Jesus' mother. But in our lives, we have our mothers, we have aunts, grandmothers, and wives. They could also be that kind of lady, it, they could also be that kind lady that's sitting on the pew with you just down from you. You know, that sits next to you. A lot of us sit in the same places every Sunday. And, do we stop and thank and turn and look to them and tell them thank you for, you know, giving us that guidance or just giving us that smile? So, in our lives, there are a lot of women that have guided us. And for me, it is especially my wife, Debbie, who I want to share. Thank you for being a guidance for me. Uh, one that tells me what... I should do, even though when I don't do what I'm supposed to, and many times smart enough to do it and helps guide me to do it when I should. So a special thank you to her. But in the early years, 
I know y'all aren't going to believe this, but I was a little bit hard-headed. <laughs> yes. Uh, when I was 18, uh, my well, actually, when I went to high school, my parents moved overseas. So I finished high school overseas in Norway. And I graduated, and it was time for me to go to college. So I came back to the States and ended up moving to San Antonio. And so I've got my parents half a world away from me. And I'm kind of all by myself. It's the first time that I haven't lived in my parents' house. Uh, so I was all by myself, but I did have two grandmothers and a great-grandmother there in San Antonio. And my dad said, you need to take care of them. I don't know, I'm thinking that maybe he was a little bit uh, smarter than I gave him credit for because a lot of times what happened is I'm thinking that I'm supposed to be taking care of them when it was kind of the opposite of what happened. Uh, my mom's mother lived there, my dad's mother lived there, and my dad's grandmother lived there, but my dad's grandmother was about two miles. She was the closest to me. And she was the young age of 92. And so, you know, I, you know, which I found out later and looking back, it was a lot of experience that she had and guided me. Uh, we early on made a deal. She uh, had problems getting around, so uh, if I would take her to church, she would take me out to eat Sunday. <laughs> so, of course, being the person I was, I always paid for the meal. And uh, she had the quickest hands of anyone I ever knew. Because I'd get home and I'd find a $20 bill in my pocket <laughs> or somewhere. Uh, but uh, it was, you know, something that my great-grandmother and I had in common is that I would take her to church and she would take me out to eat. What she was really doing was making sure that a young man who was easily swayed by the ways of the world stayed true to his beliefs and did not wander far from the temptations of the world. You know, with my parents a world away and lacking guidance and being away from home, it was my great grandmother that taught me to get back to my faith and go to church and be there every Sunday. Because I couldn't miss a Sunday because she was waiting for me. So I had to be there. <laughs> so I would uh, only have her in my life for about 10 more years. Uh, she died when she was 102. But uh, I ended up going on with my life after I moved away from San Antonio, and about 14 years later, ended up moving back to San Antonio and looking after my two grandmothers. And that was a blessing also. These women did not play fair, though. The only words that I can use is they were crafty. <laughs> they would take someone like me and I, who didn't know what he should be doing, and they would guide me. And well, I had to help because it was my duty to help them, but they were doing, what they were doing were actually looking after me because I did not have enough sense to do it myself. And basically, one of the things that I've learned is that intelligent leadership is what you do is you have someone else do what you want them to do, but you make them think it's their own idea. So, you know, I was taking care of them. <laughs> It's, I only found out later that actually they were taking care of me. And as we look at this, and we don't realize what people are doing around us, sometimes we need to stop and thank our mothers, and thank our grandmothers, and thank the lady that's sitting on a row with us for being there for us. Uh, because they have a lot of experience, and we don't always recognize that at the time, because you're probably not as hard-headed as I was, but in reflection, I learned a lot in the years that my grandmother and my great-grandmother taught me. So women of faith get you back on track, and that's who my grandmothers were. Thank you. Our final scripture reading is from the book of Exodus. I invite you to listen for the word of the Lord. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that the baby was fine, she hid him for three months. 
When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed him among the reeds of the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance so, and to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to, said to her, Take the child and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. And when the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Hello. This scripture talks about two ladies, a mother, for whatever reason, having to make a life-saving decision, sending her son down the river to a better place. Uh, we have the other lady, the Pharaoh's daughter, taking in a child as her own, unconditionally, and then eventually naming him Moses. These are two examples of sacrifice some mothers have made. Uh, aside from the caring, the nurturing, nurturing, the understanding, the love. Like Moses, I was also lost at a young age. Our mother passed away when I was three years old. I don't have any memories of her, just pictures. Uh, my dad remarried, and her stepmom took control. Uh, when we were little, I remember my aunts taking care of us, my grandmother, um, my mom's sister taking care of us. Um, eventually they, they married, um, well, my mom's sister and my dad. Um, anyhow, there were five of us kids and, you know, there had to be somebody in control. Um, times were great, summer tennis, swimming lessons, uh, camping, vacations, we're always busy and we're always together. Um, my stepmom did what she had to do to make sure all our needs were met. That was a big responsibility and a big sacrifice. To this day, we still gather around our mom at the same house, but now there's about 38 of us. And there's still plenty of room and plenty of food to go around. With the love, the caring, the discipline I received from our mom, this has prepared me and made me a better man. I'm a stepdad to three beautiful kids of Tina. Uh, we've got Chastity, Chris, and Galen. I understand the unseen sacrifices our mother made in order to keep our family together and happy. I see the same characteristics in my wife, Tina. She is what keeps our family together and happy. She is also a stepmom to my son, Jacob. I love you. Today we celebrate the ladies in our life. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> 